Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Well, trying to wake up here, trying to wake my voice up. It's the morning after Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao. Here's what you need to know. Going into the 12th round on the Showtime telecast, right, they had arguably the second best fighter pound for pound in the sport, Andre Ward doing color commentary on the telecast. Now Andre throughout the telecast was trying to make the fight sound as hyped as he could. Right? He was talking up Manny Pacquiao, he was talking up the event, he was acknowledging the crowd, he was doing everything you could do to make this fight sound as good as it could. So the 12th round is about to start, and Andre Ward at that point conceded that according to his scorecard, <laughs> he had Floyd Mayweather up eight rounds to three. Let me repeat that. Eight rounds to three over Manny Pacquiao going into the 12th round. And for those of you keeping track, at the halfway point of the 12th round, 90 seconds into the 12th round, one of boxing's finest, Andre Ward, at that point had to acknowledge that he had Floyd Mayweather way up in the 12th round. <laughs> right? So after 8 3, he had Floyd way up in the 12th round. Now, let me say, as subscribers know, I pick Floyd Mayweather. I have been talking about how this fight really was a mismatch for years. Well, Floyd Mayweather delivered for you yesterday, right? Hopefully you got odds of minus 200 or better, right? I understand right when the fight went off, Floyd jumped to something like a minus 220. That shows you the smart money coming in late on Mayweather. Right, The beauty of Floyd Mayweather, and I say this with the utmost sincerity, and I cannot say this about 98% of the fighters out there. The beauty of Floyd Mayweather is that Floyd Mayweather actually has you thinking back. He has you researching the accomplishments of Sugar Ray Leonard, of Muhammad Ali, of Sugar Ray Robinson, of Henry Armstrong, right, of Rocky Marciano, of Joe Lewis, right, of one of my personal favorites, Salvador Sanchez, right, understand when you're watching brilliance, when you're watching greatness, in your own mind you want to know where does this guy stand in history? Right? Mayweather's getting a lot of heat for comparing himself to some of the faces on boxing's Mount Rushmore. Right? Everyone has their favorite fighter. Churches develop around these fighters. I've said here in earlier videos that in my house, the quickest way for me to be homeless was to be to criticize Joe Lewis my dad's favorite fighter, arguably, right? You know, let's just say dad and I had some tense moments when I talked about Joe Lewis's lack of foot speed in my eyes, right? You know, you can imagine. I'm here today because I understood after a while that I needed to dial back my criticism of uh, the Brown Bomber. Well, let me say this. I understand Mayweather's getting a lot of heat from people like Leila Ali, people like Mike Tyson, Right, People who really believe in certain fighters in history and stuff like that. Just understand the reason we're remembering and re-examining Rocky Marciano, Ali, right, Ray Leonard, is because this fighter, Floyd Mayweather, is that special. This fighter warrants the comparison, right? I personally believe, and I was listening to ESPN's coverage, right? Ooh, 
you know what, I'm sure they consider me biased, let's just say I consider them biased. I was hearing lines on a panel that included Teddy Atlas <laughs> that Floyd Mayweather is not at the top 20 of all-time greats, right? And they were throwing out names like Willie Pep. Look, if you're going to throw out Willie Pep's name, if you're a boxing historical type, let's throw out Sandy Sadler's name, please. Okay, if you're going to go back there, understand all fighters have a plus and a minus, right? If you're going to throw out Aaron Pryor's name, right, then please, let's recognize that Pryor got hit so much, he went blind in one eye, right? Defense wasn't his best attribute, right? If you're going to throw out Roberto Duran's name, you have to remember Kirkland Lang. Understand, these guys had off nights. Right? These guys had issues. Right? My point is simply this. Floyd Mayweather is on the very short list of the best fighters ever in the sport of boxing. The very short list. As I look at Floyd, you know, it's a shame that Floyd wasn't fighting a fighter who at least is close to his level. A guy like a Pernell Whitaker, a guy with a high, high, high boxing IQ who does a lot. That's who Floyd should have been fighting, right? It's a shame we can't, you know, somehow equate the weights on prime Roy Jones to prime Floyd Mayweather, right? Let's remember the Mayweather who fought yesterday, as dazzling as he was, Right, Andre Ward's scorecard was pretty much my scorecard. I have to tell you, I gave Mayweather the first three rounds. Then I go on Twitter and I, you know, was just reading some of the views of the fight. Then I see that Lou DiBella, Sergio Martinez's promoter, uh, gave Floyd Mayweather the first three rounds. Right, I gave Pacquiao the fourth round. I gave Pacquiao the sixth round. Let's just say, wow, after that, it was hard to give Pacquiao a round. The eighth round, I thought, was close. The eighth round, I thought, was close. But I have to tell you, there was a gap here. There was a talent gap. I know the public, at least the vocal people in the public, talked up Manny Pacquiao as if he were, let's say, the second best fighter pound for pound in the sport. Um, if he was, and I don't think so personally, right, um, I I would pick Andre Ward, I would pick James DeGale um, before I considered Manny Pacquiao, right? I don't know how Pacquiao somehow rises in the rankings above Juan Manuel Marquez who knocked him out, right? But that's my own beef. But let me just say this, there was a gap here. The frustrating thing with the fight was the gap. As you watched the fight, you understood that if you had bought into the hype, you were had. Right? There was a gap here. It's noticeable from the opening bell. Right? Floyd Mayweather comes out and you understand that Manny Pacquiao just didn't have the attributes to mount a serious challenge. Now let me back up a little bit and let me give context to the comments. Nacho Beristain, the trainer of Juan Manuel Marquez, right? One of boxing's trainer emeritus, right? Great trainer. In an interview one time, candidly said, that Pacquiao was at his most dangerous, right, in the first fight, not the second, third, or fourth fight, the first fight, right, because as Beristain put it, back then Pacquiao was unpredictable and he was like a wildcat, right, Pacquiao, in other words, you know, it's when you don't know what he's doing and he's jumping around and there's a lot of extra movement, right? Extra movement that he was at his most dangerous. 
Floyd Mayweather has a saying. He says, don't work harder, work smarter. Right? Let me say, it was the inefficiency of Pacquiao's game that made him dangerous. In other words, back then, Pacquiao didn't have a right hand. Right? In my opinion, he still only has a right hook up close. Right? Back then, Pacquiao, you know, lived off a long left hand, just like he does now. I know on the telecast, they were trying to talk up some big left uppercut Pacquiao was supposed to have. Pacquiao has certain punches he can throw after he hurts you, not before he hurts you. Right? But understand, it's because Pacquiao was younger and jumped around the ring more that a technician like a Marquez would look at Pacquiao and be unable to interpret some of his moves because Marquez is thinking in terms of efficiency, right? Less motion if you can accomplish the same result. And Pacquiao back then was different. He was jumping around. Now, as Pacquiao started to streamline his game, the deficiencies in his game became apparent. Now, let me say this. On ESPN, they said, hey, if Mayweather, <laughs> I don't know why Mayweather gets blamed so much for brilliant performances, but they were saying if Mayweather expects people to pay $89.99 and $99.99, how could he give a standard Floyd Mayweather performance? Right? Well, let me make a few points. First off, the standard Floyd Mayweather performance is typically the most brilliant performance in the sport of boxing. Isn't it? Doesn't Mayweather have the best CompuBox numbers in boxing? Before the Canelo fight, weren't we led to believe that that would be a competitive fight? Weren't we all shocked that one judge actually had that fight a draw, given that our own eyes told us? that Mayweather won that fight by a minimum of three or four or five rounds. Wasn't Canelo unbeaten going into that fight? Right? The Robert the Ghost Guerrero fight. Guerrero hadn't lost for several years. When in that fight did you realize that Guerrero needed a knockout to win the fight? Was it the ninth round? Was it the tenth round? The one thing you and I both know is it was with several rounds to spare. In other words, you knew Guerrero could win the remainder of the fight 10-9 and still lose on the scorecards. He was being dominated that badly. Look at the Power Connect numbers in these fights against contenders. Right? Who's the soft touch that Floyd Mayweather has fought? Robert Guerrero? Marcus Maidana, who destroyed Adrian Broner, right? There was public outcry after the first Maidana fight. They did it again. Did you think Maidana won the second fight? Did you think the second fight was competitive? Look deeper into Mayweather's record. Miguel Cotto. Understand, Mayweather's winning these fights by wide margins. Right? That's why Floyd Mayweather was in a position to make the big money yesterday. So he gave his typically brilliant performance, a performance that had Andre Ward's card with Mayweather up 8-3. Think about it. You could have doubled Manny Pacquiao's point total and still not had eight rounds. Right? 8-3 going into the 12th. So, my point is this, as the world criticizes Floyd Mayweather for yet another dominant performance, let me offer just a different point of view. Isn't it up to the challenger to change the dynamic of the fight? If I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko and he's fighting his typical fight, right? And keep in mind, Vladimir Klitschko hasn't lost for a decade. If he's fighting his typical fight and he's the champ, and let's be real here, even though both of these guys went into the ring wearing belts, we all knew that Floyd Mayweather 
the guy making more money, the top billed guy, was the pound for pound champion. If I'm fighting the champ and I'm the challenger, don't I have to change the dynamic in the fight? In other words, if Vladimir Klitschko is being Vladimir Klitschko, if I'm Tyson Fury and I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko and he's being Vladimir Klitschko and he's winning rounds with a jab, with power shots, he's walking me down. Who's to blame for that? Him or me? Manny Pacquiao came in and couldn't change Floyd Mayweather's game. Floyd Mayweather was brilliant as usual, with all due respect to Floyd's dad. And I understand where Floyd's dad's coming from, because the crowd was a Pacquiao crowd. I get it. But understand, Floyd Mayweather's being Floyd Mayweather. People have a problem with that now? You know, if Manny Pacquiao couldn't change the dynamic in the fight, who's to blame? Floyd? Let's also talk about boxing in general. The next sentence I'm going to say sums up how I handicap boxing. To beat a good defense, you have to come in at angles with tools that your opponent doesn't know how to deal with. Right? Angles and tools. Now let's talk about the tools because the tools are really the important part of this fight, aren't they? Right? My basic premise here is that Manny Pacquiao just didn't have the tools to mount a serious challenge to Floyd Mayweather. Right? Let's talk about the tools. Let's talk about the tools where I thought Mayweather had the advantage. Body punching. Who's the better body puncher between these two guys? I would say the best body punch either of these has guys have is Floyd's left hook to the body. Right? The offhand. We know Floyd's right-handed. We know Manny's left-handed. Let's talk about their offhands. Floyd's left, Manny's right. Who has the superior offhand? Floyd's jab was landing all night, folks. Manny's jab, look at the CompuBox numbers, right? I understand now we're hearing, oh, Manny may have been hurt. Look at the videos I made and several people here online made before the fight, where we talked about the inaccuracy of Manny's right jab, right? Understand, Manny's jab was inaccurate before this fight. Manny's jab was inaccurate in this fight. If you want to blame an injury, or, go ahead. I don't care, right? You're going to have to try to figure out the fight in which Manny Pacquiao's jab was accurate. My point to you is simply Floyd Mayweather has the superior offhand. Understand, too, I mentioned Floyd's left hook to the body. Floyd's a right-handed fighter, right? Arguably, Floyd's best punch. I understand some will say straight right. I would say it's that left hook to the body. Right? That's a devastating part of Floyd's arsenal. Manny has no punch that's remotely commensurate with his right hand. I would say Floyd has a superior offhand. Floyd also has a superior back foot game. Can we agree that Manny comes in, Floyd's able to just back up. If he's not running around the ring... He's not galloping like Amir Khan against Marcus Maidana, right? He's just in the pocket. He moves a little back, creates another pocket, right? He knows how to operate on his back foot. I would say Manny Pacquiao doesn't have those skills. He just doesn't, right? Let's talk about the on hand. Who landed more of their Sunday punch? Did Manny land more straight left hands than Floyd landed straight right hands? I'd say no. I'd say Mayweather's straight right was a bigger factor in this fight than Manny's best punch, his straight left. I would argue that Mayweather's doing things like pull counters, right, literally, allowing Manny to touch him with that right jab and then coming in with power shots. 
right? Floyd can lead with that right hand. The straight right's on display in the Robert Guerrero fight. Right? Let's talk slickness, slipperiness, whatever you want to call it, defense. Other guy gets in, your shoulder rolling, you're moving a little bit, you're moving just enough so the punches don't land. Is that Manny Pacquiao's game? Doesn't Floyd do that so well that he might do it the best in the sport? Let's talk about the Manny Pacquiao side of the ledger, right? You get into areas that really are outside of what the guys are doing themselves in the ring, don't you? Right? Public opinion. The fact that he walks in the ring, the crowd's chanting, Manny, Manny, Manny. Right? You know, Pacquiao also looks like he's the one cutting off the ring, doesn't he? He's the more aggressive guy. There's an energy to Pacquiao. But understand, unless that energy translates into landed punches, right? Pacquiao is not using it to much impact against a master like a Floyd Mayweather. So the problem you had in this fight, and it's the million dollar problem, is that Manny Pacquiao from distance really didn't have the right jab to flush Floyd out of the pocket. He didn't. Right? From distance, Floyd understood that Manny's offensive repertoire was limited. Manny has to be up close to land that right hook. His right jab is inaccurate. It's underdeveloped, even now, and he's in his mid-30s. Right? Let's talk about that left hand. Now, Manny will come in and throw hooks when he has you hurt. The question is, what does he do when you're alert, not hurt? Right? Manny needs to throw that left up top. It's a set angle. Right? It's a set angle. So Floyd Mayweather, and here's the tip-off to the fact that this was going to be a lopsided fight is able to drop his hands. Folks, I'm talking about in the first round. When's the last time you saw a guy drop his hands against another guy as blessed with hand speed? I'll give Pacquiao the hand speed advantage. As Manny Pacquiao. Floyd's able to drop his hands because he understands that at these angles, Manny Pacquiao can only hit him from distance in certain places. So Floyd knows, positioning-wise, as long as he's about three feet from Manny Pacquiao, as long as there's a little distance between himself and Manny Pacquiao, Pacquiao's not going to hurt him with the right jab. Right? Pacquiao can't lunge in with the right hook. Pacquiao can't come in and hit him in the body. Pacquiao's only shot is a left hand up top. Right? Floyd knows exactly where Pacquiao is going to have to hurt him. Floyd doesn't even need a hand up when they're three feet apart. Let me go one step further. There are times in this fight where Manny Pacquiao jumps in and tries to throw a lot of punches. I know the crowd bought into it. This is what worried Floyd's dad. Right? Pacquiao comes in with a lot of movement. Here's the thing. Watch Floyd's right hand. Right? Floyd just puts his right hand up here. Right? Floyd knows. Manny's left hand heavy. He's too left hand heavy. When he comes in and he's square. Right? Because that's what Pacquiao does. He comes in and he's square. And he tries to throw a lot of punches. Right? Floyd knew. I can just put a hand up, block his big shot, block the biggest bullet in his gun, and survive. The fourth round is remarkable. Pacquiao lands flush on Floyd. Floyd's hurt. 
right? Floyd backs up. Floyd goes like this, right? He literally turtles. Pacquiao comes in. He has Floyd hurt. He flashes some hand speed. But he's not a guy who can stay in front of you. He's not a guy who's then going to put a shoulder on you. He's not a guy who's going to find a way to get around Floyd's elbow as he has his hands up. He's not a guy who's going to have power shots behind Floyd's guard. He's not a big hooker. So even though he has Floyd hurt, he backs away. Understand he has to back away because he doesn't have that rough and tumble inside game. Right? He's hurt Floyd. Floyd's no longer throwing a jab. Floyd's backed up. He's up on the ropes. This is Pacquiao's best moment in the fight. He backs away. He doesn't even jump in later in the round, right? Because while he has the aggressiveness, while he has the hand speed, while he has the foot speed, he doesn't have the tools in his toolbox to open up on the inside when a guy is turtled. And keep in mind, Floyd knows as long as he's able to block Manny's right, he's okay. If there's a punch that can knock him down, excuse me, block Manny's left, he's okay. He knows that if any punch can knock him down in the fight, it's Pacquiao's left hand. Right? He knows that. So he pays close attention to it. So you're going to notice other times in this fight, sixth round, Manny gets Floyd in the corner charges in Floyd quickly ties him up easily ties him up knows exactly that he has to disengage Manny's left hand now my point to you is simply against other opposition let's say James DeGale right people know I'm a big James DeGale fan I view James DeGale as more complicated than Manny Pacquiao. Understand DeGale has a thing where he comes in and his footwork is such that you don't know if he's being righty or lefty. There's a hybrid there. It's a Dimitri Pirov type game where he comes in and you don't know which hand he's loading up on. He's two-handed, not one-handed, right? And he's throwing punches. And understand, if you block the Gale up here, the Gale has the kind of offensive arsenal where he can then widen the punch to get around your guard the next time he throws it. In other words, the Gale is able to maintain defense while changing angles on punches with both hands while giving you different looks, right? One minute you're fighting a southpaw, the next minute you're fighting a righty, the next minute you're not sure because the guy is just seamlessly changing front legs as he comes to you in the same approach. As you move right to left or left to right, the gale is shifting his weight without shifting his feet. Not a lot of wasted movement. Right? That's a guy with a lot of tools in the toolbox. That's not Manny Pacquiao. Right? That's not. So, this fight was lopsided. Right? I have no idea why people ever thought that the guy willing to take a 50-50 split years ago with drug testing right the same guy who offered the other guy 40 million dollars to make the fight happen when 40 million dollars was huge money in boxing right last night redefined that but 40 million you could do a lot worse right there were a lot of great heavyweights who never made 40 million dollars in a night right like 
really close to all of them, right? I don't know why the fiction came up. That that meant that guy was afraid of fighting this guy. Folks, there's some, Abel Sanchez, I mentioned it in an earlier video, the trainer for Janady Golovkin, who don't believe this fight was ever competitive, who believe Floyd had a greater advantage years ago. Understand the highlights. Manny Pacquiao standing over guys. Manny Pacquiao overwhelming guys. Manny Pacquiao just using blinding hand speed to blind guys. Right? The highlights seem to have misled people into believing that Manny Pacquiao had an accurate jab. That Manny Pacquiao was a great body puncher. That if Manny Pacquiao hurt you and you went like this in a big fight, that he could actually stay inside and do a lot to you. Right? Joshua Clotty went like this and somehow went the distance with Manny Pacquiao. Right? We were misled into believing that Manny Pacquiao had the kind of punching power where Floyd was going to hit the canvas several times. Right? Even though Manny Pacquiao had knocked out a guy since 2009. Right? So let me say, Pacquiao, he's a Hall of Famer. That should tell you how far above the Hall of Fame threshold Floyd Mayweather is. Right? We're being harsh on Mayweather because he's that good. Right? It's like, it's like a politician who runs for president. Right? They've run for mayor. They've run for governor. They've been vetted by the public. Suddenly they run for president. And the world then starts questioning things they didn't question before because now the scrutiny is serious right with Floyd Mayweather the minute you get into the conversation with Ray Robinson Ali Ray Leonard the minute you're in that conversation the minute you place yourself in that conversation people are gonna say who does he think he is he's arrogant he's terrible what he is is brilliant this Pacquiao fight, sadly, because the dominance was so thorough, will likely be forgotten in a few years. Right? Ten years from now, people will have a hard time believing that for at least five years, the public was clamoring for this fight. And they're going to look at the numbers on this fight, and they're going to say, gee, I don't, you know, this fight is less understandable than Lennox Lewis against Mike Tyson. Right? They're going to look at the numbers and they're going to say, wow, you know, how did this fight generate this game? Right? How did this fight generate these numbers? Right? As I've said before, you know, Pacquiao's a great fighter right now. He is. He reminds me of Brett Favre. Right? You can't place Brett Favre on the same platform that you place Joe Montana, right? You just can't. The now doesn't connote all-time greatness, right? So to sum up, this fight descended into Floyd Mayweather, shooting a jab, avoiding Manny's left hand, doing pull counters on Manny Pacquiao, Right, tying up Manny Pacquiao when he got too close to him. The mystery of this fight was how, you know, I made an earlier video saying Manny Pacquiao has to win the first round. The mystery was how Floyd Mayweather was able to dominate the early rounds. Right, you knew Pacquiao was in trouble the minute he lost the first round. You know, that's when you said, whoa, wait a moment, I know Mayweather's going to dominate late. If Mayweather's going to dominate early, what's left for Pacquiao? Right? I told you, I didn't think Manny Pacquiao could knock out Floyd Mayweather. Right? Pacquiao landed flush at least twice in this fight. Floyd went nowhere. Right? The fight was lopsided. I understand people are upset. I understand Manny Pacquiao believes he won the fight. 
Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. believes he beat Andres Fonfara, even though he quit on his stool. Right? Don't be confused by the marketing. Don't be confused by people saying, you know what, he was hurt going into this fight and all this other stuff. There's a lot of spin going on. Understand, boxing's like the NFL. No one's really that healthy. You spend your time preparing for fights by training and sparring against other guys, by hitting other guys, by getting hit by other guys, right? Guys are sore on fight night. Right? Everyone has aches and pains on fight night because this is a collision sport. Right? So you're going to hear a lot of spin. A lot of people are going to be, you know, saying a lot of things, hoping to get a rematch or, you know, another big payday or, you know, to at least distance themselves from the performance and stuff like that. Just understand this performance was so dominant. That Andre Ward, while talking up the action, had to quietly concede going into the 12th round that he had it eight rounds to three. Right? No judge, no judge scoring the fight last night had Manny Pacquiao within three rounds of Floyd Mayweather. Right? It's 116, 112, 116, 112. Then the last judge, who I actually agree with, had it wider than that. Right? The fight was a mismatch. Manny Pacquiao was a great guy, so was Freddie Roach. They were in over their heads. The media was giving you a false narrative. This fight, in my opinion, was never that competitive. You knew that just off Mayweather's tools. Better body puncher. Great left hook. Nice jab. Great straight right hand. A history of beating guys at higher weights than when Manny Pacquiao fought them. Right? Let me just name three off the top of my head. Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Floyd fights him at 154. Right? Ricky Hatton. Floyd fights him at 147. Right? Miguel Cotto. I believe Floyd fights him at either 147 or 154. Right now, Manny Pacquiao fights Oscar at 147. He fights Ricky Hatton at 140. He fights Miguel Cotto at a catch weight, something like 145. The public got duped. Right, the public started believing the hype. Let me close with this. Floyd Mayweather gave one of the best pre post-fight press conferences I've ever seen in my life. He was very respectful of Manny Pacquiao. Then a reporter asked him, you know, hey, is this the most important fight you had? And Floyd diplomatically said, you know, this fight to me is no more important than the third guy I fought in my career. Right? The idea is that, you know, Floyd's career is about him evolving as a fighter improving over time as he says working smarter not harder right for Mayweather the sport is a process he's picking up skills he's a much better inside fighter today than he was in the first Castillo fight if there's an Achilles heel to the Mayweather to the Mayweather legacy right just like the Roland Lestars of first fight is for Marciano that Castillo first fight is for Floyd Mayweather, right? Mayweather improves every fight. He doesn't have the physical gifts. He doesn't have the legs that he had when he was fighting Diego Corrales years ago. But he has much greater understanding. And at that post-fight press conference, he actually admitted that he knew he was going to win the fight in the first round. And he further, and it's sad the reporters didn't follow up on it, he further talked about how if Pacquiao had done certain things, he was going to do certain other things, right? He talked about throwing a jab over Pacquiao's jab and things like that, right? I encourage you to listen to the film of that post-fight press conference. You'll understand that Mayweather is really a guy who has always known he was going to win this fight.
right? Mayweather is a guy who views the sport as math. He can tell you, honestly, that he no longer loves boxing. And at the same time, you understand that a mathematician doesn't need to love math to add numbers, right? He knew what he had to do. He knew he had to tie up Pacquiao's left hand. He starts the fight, and the first round is breathtaking. He starts the fight in the middle of the ring, and it's obvious, 90 seconds into the fight, that it's a mismatch in the middle of the ring, right? I thought this was a dominant performance by a dominant fighter. Whether or not you think he's TBE, please, let's not try to fool the public into believing he doesn't belong in the conversation. Right? On ESPN, they were saying, oh, he came along at the right time, blah, blah, blah. Come on now. I've watched the welterweight division a hell of a long time. And I can tell you there are very, very, very few guys who would be able to hold their own against him. I'll agree with those who say that prime Thomas Hearns might have had too much length for him. What I want to encourage historical types to do is to go back and look at the scorecards of Ray Leonard against Prime Thomas Hearns. You're going to see on those scorecards that at the time of that stoppage, Thomas Hearns was winning that fight. And, of course, that fight was a 15-round fight, something we don't do now. Right? So style-wise, you can place certain guys in the ring and say, these guys historically will give... Mayweather a hard time. That doesn't mean that they're better than Mayweather when you consider the universe of other fighters. In other words, if they were all in a round robin, who would do better against a common group of opponents? And as you think about guys in history who'd give Mayweather a hard time, I'd love to see Mayweather against Pernell Whitaker. Just understand that Manny Pacquiao does not belong in that conversation. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I do believe Ray Leonard and Floyd Mayweather would be a hell of a fight. I do believe there are others. Ray Robinson, Floyd Mayweather would be a hell of a fight. I understand many of you believe firmly that Ray Robinson and Ray Leonard beat, um, you know, beat Floyd. I understand Hagler threw short punches that would be hard to counterpunch. We can debate all of this. Just understand that this fighter belongs in that conversation. Thanks for stopping by.